I just got back from the 2024 FIRST Championship. Let's talk about how it went. First, let's talk about my role. So this year I was assigned as a FIRST Technical Advisor for the FIRST Tech Challenge Franklin Division Field Number 2. This means that I was on the field for most of the qualification matches that occurred in the Franklin Division. And because of where that field was physically positioned, I happened to be the FTA for some of the semifinals in the Franklin Division, as well as the finals, and some of these inter-division semifinals that occurred after we got done with division level play. My role as an FTA was largely the same as it was for any other competition this year. I helped the students to get loaded onto the field and get set up and ready for the match, and once everything was ready, hand over the field to the head referee to actually get things started. In between matches, it involved making sure that the field was all set up correctly, making a few fixes, replacing a few tiles, and doing the routine maintenance that you might have to do occasionally at other events, but happens a lot more often at the championship because the robots are really trying their hardest to get as many points as possible, and it can cause a lot of damage in the process. Now, because the first championship is a big show, especially when you get to the semifinal and final matches, there's another aspect that you have to consider when you're working as an FTA, and that is the correspondence between you and the field managers and the showrunners that's doing all of the timing of when exactly those matches are going to play. While in a qualification match setting, you're basically going as fast as reasonably possible trying to get through all of the scheduled matches, when it comes to the interdivision semifinal and final matches specifically, there's a lot of timing that has to be done, because it's not just matches that are occurring, there's other forms of entertainment and other things going on in the other programs in the same building that you have to account for. So there's a lot of interaction between the FTAs, the field managers, and the showrunners, basically trying to go with the flow as best as possible. And I think everyone involved, despite there being a lot of uncertainty in how things were going to flow, did a really good job this year. I never felt like I had to really rush the students. We definitely prepared them and tried to get them on the field and set up and ready to go as fast as possible, but it was never a situation where I felt like we were lowering the standards of the match experience in order to shoehorn a match into a particular time slot. So I'm really happy that it worked out that way. I think we did an overall good job of getting the timing down, being predictable in how we were setting up for the matches, and still putting on a great show in the process. Speaking of the show, I want to talk about the live video switching that occurred through most of those matches. So some of my recent videos, I've been showing off an FTC switcher app that basically connects to the First Tech Challenge scoring system and allows you to control a video switcher so that you can change camera angles at certain points during a match and between matches. I'm very pleased to say that we used this app at the 2024 championship, and it worked most of the way through. It got us through all of the qualification matches on all four divisions, and even through the semifinals on all four divisions. Unfortunately, there was a bug that prevented it from being used in the finals matches, so it was up to the production company to go ahead and manually do the video switching for all four divisions during those finals, but they are old hat at that. They've been doing that for years, so they had no problem jumping in at the last moment. It was never designed to get us through the interdivision semi or final matches, so wasn't planning on using it then, but I'm really pleased that we were able to take some of the load off the shoulders of the production company folks and basically make a good, consistent show in the process. Now, we should probably talk about what happened in the Ochoa division this year. So if you're not aware, we had an issue with the lighting in the Ochoa division. I want to give a huge shout out to the student who came to the question box on Friday morning after we had played about seven matches in the Ochoa division, basically to say something seems off. They had a pretty consistent camera vision routine in their autonomous, and suddenly it wasn't working. And they basically asked, has anything changed? And it turns out, upon a further investigation, that something had changed in the lighting. 
I guess a light had gone out at some point Thursday night and had been replaced in the rigging by the production company. And although it was a one-to-one -one replacement and the new one was right beside it, it happened to be at a different angle. So there was a change and it could be something that had affected the calibration of the lighting for the teams playing in those first seven matches. That student, again, was incredibly gracious in the way that they approached it in the question box. They led us to ask the right questions and do the discovery necessary to find out that something had indeed changed and it might have affected the fairness of those matches. So at this point, I happened to be shadowing one of the lead FTAs for the event. And I got to oversee the response to this situation, and I'm incredibly proud of how this group of volunteers responded, because we all knew that we wanted to have a fair experience for all of the teams involved, and that was going to require some doing. The most natural thing to do in that situation might have been to say, well, sorry, something changed in those seven matches, and we can probably give you some time to calibrate over lunch, but we've got a tight schedule to keep to, and that's kind of it. But this World Championship crew is top notch, and they wanted to do everything possible to make sure that everyone had a fair experience, even if that meant jumping through a few hoops to get there. So we gathered a representative from every team in the Ochoa division and basically said, hey, this happened. A lighting change occurred, and it may have affected the outcome of those first seven matches. So we're going to give you all an opportunity right now to go ahead and calibrate again in the new lighting. Basically, start fresh. And we're going to replay those seven matches at the end of the day. Now, in order to make that happen, we had to do a little bit of work. We had to play matches through lunch, and we played those matches as fast as possible, basically to make up the time that we were going to spend at the end of the day when we replayed those seven matches. I want to also thank the eight teams that were involved in two of those matches who all basically came together and said, hey, we don't think it affected our match, so there's no need to replay it. That saved us some critical time that allowed us to get done earlier on Friday. I hope that all of the Ochoa Division teams felt like they were well supported in that situation. Again, I am incredibly proud of all the people that I saw working very hard to make sure that we gave a fair experience to all of the teams in that division. And I hope that everyone came away with it feeling good, that we will do what's necessary to make sure that the championship is a good experience for everyone involved. Let's take a moment to talk about the game itself, the center stage game for First Tech Challenge, because the first championship is sort of the final test of whether a game holds up to championship level play. I really liked this year's game because even if you had the most basic robot, you still had the opportunity to grab pixels that were already on the playing field or introduced in the wing and push them over and score some points with them in the backstage area. And as the season progressed and robots got more advanced, we saw more pixels being scored on the backdrop. And from my experience, teams in my local area went for the hanging and the drone portion of the game very early in the season, because obviously it looks really cool. It can mean a lot of points if you get it right, but it's also a really fun engineering challenge. There was a wide diversity of tasks to accomplish in this year's game, and even at the championship level, we saw teams go for a few different strategies. I think it's really difficult to design a game that scales both for new teams at the beginning of a season and championship level teams that have a lot of experience. This game really did that because I saw opportunities for scoring both at the very beginning at our very first scrimmage and at the end of the championship where there were still pixels left to be scored. I think we have all seen games in the past both with First Tech Challenge and First Robotics competition that end a little bit early. Teams simply run out of game elements where for whatever reason there's a lot of waiting around for end game or things like that. And we really didn't see that here, at least in my opinion, watching all of these matches. 
So I want to give a lot of credit to the game design committee for designing a game that allows teams to have a wide diversity of tasks that they can accomplish, to set a strategy of what they want to focus on, and see how those strategies play out against one another even at the championship level event. And at the end of the day, even through all of the finals matches, there were still pixels waiting to be scored, allowing teams to accomplish new and higher scores all throughout this competition. Of course, there's so much more that happens at the first championship other than the matches and other than first tech challenge. So I highly encourage everyone, even if you don't qualify for the championship level event, if you have the opportunity to visit the event and just walk around for a day, I highly encourage you to do so because it is quite an experience. It is amazing to see the booths at the innovation fair to see all the teams doing things in their downtime on Discovery Green, to see the competitions at all three levels, and just see the excitement of everyone involved. Again, if you have an opportunity anytime in the future to go as a student or volunteer later on, I highly encourage you to do so. Finally, on a somber note, first CEO Chris Moore shared via email with the first community that unfortunately, a student passed away at the 2024 championship. I don't have anything to add to what was in that email, but I would like to ask the entire FIRST community to please support one another in times of need, and please reach out if you need support. It was an honor to serve as a volunteer at the 2024 Championship, and I hope to see you all again very soon.